Hey guys, I'm from Team Softwatch here, and this is my uh, combo and explanation video for Tachikaze's, my Tachikaze standard deck. Um, I'll leave a link to the deck profile in the description. In that video is just a, that video is just a simple run through showing you of what cards I have and, um, <coughs> basically what cards I run and how many of each. Uh, in this video, I will be going through the skills of the cards, my reasons for choosing the cards, and um, a few combo, two or three combos at the end. As an extra note on this video, there has been some time since the deck profile. I have made changes, and I will explain the changes as I get to the cards that I have sorted out. So, let's go into this now. And go for it here. <coughs> um, now you show and start over because it's obviously dragon and there is no other. Um, so for grade threes, starting off, we have Gigarex at four. Um, his two skills are uh, his top one is an auto ability, which is um. <coughs> When it attacks, uh, I can add one gauge to any of my rear guards, and he gets 5,000 power for each one of my rear guards, regardless of if I put a gauge on them or not. Um, <clears throat> and his second ability is to remove five gauges as cost to give three of my front rear units, uh, three of my rear guards. Uh, 5,000 power, and if my opponent's on 4 damage or less, I can deal 1 damage. Uh, the second skill is actually the main reason why this deck is being run. That, and the fact that I don't actually have Anger Bladers at the moment. Well, I have one. <coughs> and, um, I mean, I... I I needed a I needed a kind of like a revamp of the deck that I had before um, with raging tactics stuff and this is actually something really uh, like I said in the uh, in the deck profile um, I was lucky to get a lot of these cards from just donations and trades. Um, this is this is a this is this was not really a last minute. I was able to build this. Um, I was able to build the main brunt of it um, a couple of uh, about a week or, or a week and a half beforehand, and the tweaks came later um, when I actually obtained a lot more cards from um, Harry. Thanks, bud. This is actually kind of like a common a um, able to. Th I'm able to actually have this due to the cards that I've got from there got from um all of those so um <laughs> sorry about the rank but had to be said so this is actually the main card of the deck um i'm wanting to ride this when i uh, ride this to get excel circles um the secondary skill is the heart and soul of this deck so it's a gay it this is basically gaining gauges as much as possible and um, getting games as much as possible, and just using, uh, just being able to use the secondary skill to kind of deal my opponent damage before going for the final push. Uh, next, we have our good boy Opti. Um, this is the second grade two that I have a f uh, grade three that I have a four. Sorry. <laughs> <clears throat> his skill is on place for the van and, van and rear on place uh, or when it attacks a vanguard you add one gauge to a rear guard um, granted I don't really want to ride this guy but if I have to I will um, and I have to admit that, that he, he's a really good card he's a definite staple if you're going for high gauges um, I personally don't know why some people are not running him uh, with Anger Blader. He's a definite asset to any any gauge-centered build. 
um, uh, with uh, and when you're running him, uh, if you do ride him and go XL two, just remember that the um, the gauge uh, is done second. The XL draw is actually done first. So um, a really all, good all around card for actually getting gauges onto the board as much as possible. Um, so the effect for the skill can go off. <coughs> and next is Angerblader. My one copy of Angerblader. Um, okay, so his skills are um, is an axe skill uh, to put a gauge, uh, a rearguard as a gauge on another rearguard uh, to retire upon uh, one of your opponent's rears. And then uh, and his other attack is on attack, counterblast, restand and stand uh, three units with three gauges. Three units with three or more gauges and your entire front row gets an extra 5,000 power. Um, it's something, it's actually something that I've noticed people are forgetting about that skill is the extra, is the attack boost and it's something that's uh, something that can actually help kind of like the low attackers to get a little extra power without before you even go into your draft tricks. Um so yeah he's actually a 16,000 attacker when you use his skill a uh, 17,000 attacker when you use his skill so yeah um, he's a good finisher as well um, if uh if they've been able to survive a Giga Rex turn and I've expended the hand a lot and I've been able to get, um, I've been able to hold on to Anger Blader uh, or I've been able to see Anger Blader, I'll, I, I actually have on a couple of occasions ridden Anger Blader and gone for the swing myself. Um, he's a finisher, not a main unit. Um, and to be honest, that I think that's what he's supposed to be. Um, if, if I do run, if when I start running an Anger Blader build, I'm not only going to be running Anger Blader. Um, uh, the people who have been doing all f uh, more, f uh, more for them, they've actually gotten really far. It's re it's a really good build. It's a, it's really good to have this, but just having one grade four, um, one grade three is kind of not a good idea in my personal opinion. Okay, so for the grade twos, um, we start with Mega Rex. Uh, run at four, and his skill is on van or rear. Uh, when he attacks a vanguard, you retire a rear guard and draw a card. Um, and um, uh, and if he's on the rear guard. You can counter blast plus one gauge, and he gets five thousand power for every gauge on him when when the gauge is added. I haven't seen this in practice, and I will have to have this confirmed. But I believe if he is restored by Angle Blader, you can use his skill again because it is an auto ability, and it is not once per turn. So I'm guessing if you use his skill. Getting the third gauge, he'll get an extra fifteen, and then on the restand, he'll get an extra twenty thousand, which means he'll go up by thirty-five thousand, um, just by his own skill alone. Um, because you add one gauge, and he gets an extra twenty thousand on top of the fifteen thousand that he's got, because it is until the end of turn. Um, that is a very, very powerful restand. Um. A Especially if it's going for a crit. Um, it's a it, it, it's something that I've it's something that I've not I, I really enjoy actually seeing him. Um, it, it, I to be honest, I would probably keep this guy in as maybe a two of uh, going into an anger blader for anger blader build. Although I haven't actually seen um, any of the builds running, I, I'm not sure if I've seen any of the builds running him. Um, because uh, I, I, I'll have to relook over, but I 
haven't noticed him. I've no, I've seen Bomb Raptor, Sweep, and um, Smilodon. I haven't actually seen Mega Rex in uh, most of the uh, big builds. But well, that's uh, if I'm if I'm wrong, please notify me. So second sweep. Um, this is one of the cards that has been changed. <coughs> He's currently gone up to three. Um, he's currently gone up to three. Uh, uh, for, he's gone up from two to three uh, in this latest in this in this latest version. Um, his two skills are auto when it attacks a vanguard. Auto first once a turn when it attacks a vanguard. You can put you put the top deck uh, top card as a gauge. And as when it's got three gauges, it gets five thousand power. When it's got three gauges, it can't be chosen by your opponent's abilities. Effectively, the skill of resist um, from premium. <coughs> um, basically, it can't be chosen by anything that your opponent does. Um, even if I have to make the choice, um, uh, with Blasted Dark, even if I have to make the choice, I can't. Uh, I can't do him because it's my opponent's. Um, I can't choose him because it's my opponent's card ability. Um, stuff like field wipes and all that um, happen. Um, he will turn into Huger, just in case you're wondering. Because yes, everything turns into Hugo. Um, any lane, a non-target in removal does actually get him and attacking over him. But once he's got, uh, I mean, once he's got the three gauges, he's twenty-four, um, which is actually difficult to get over, and he's get, just going to get bigger and bigger. Um, yeah, so obviously a guy, a good card to have at that number, and Smilodon. Uh, again, at three, I removed the two um, raiders to actually add these two up. Um, so Smilo uh, on Van and Rear. Uh, it's the same as Opti when placed. Or when attacks a Vanguard, you uh, put top deck, or you can put put the top de top card of your deck as a gauge to one of your rear guards. Um, I'm looking to ride this whenever I can. Uh, <coughs> if I don't ride Mega Rex, I'll ride Smilo. Um, and to be honest, Smilo's the better choice uh, for the Vanguard. Because Mega Rex wants gauges, so does Sweep. Um, so Smilo, uh, a, a really good, a definite staple for a gauge, uh, gauge centered build, which this is, obviously. Um, but yeah, this is actually a really good card. I enjoy playing it every time. I I will, like I said, I'll try and ride it when I when I can. Um, so yeah, a uh, great a uh, great three a uh, great two, and the last great two uh, is Armored Mammoth. This was Attempt Mammoth in the original, but is now Armored. Um, the reason being the skill is much much better. Um, his skill is auto. When it attacks, discard all of these units, equip gauges, and your uh, and until the end of that battle, when your opponent would call cards from their hand from the, to the guardian circle, they must call the amount you discarded or more. So to put it to basically, if you attack with him when you are attacking uh, with. When you attack with him, if he has four gauges, your opponent's got to guard with four or more cards. Or say he's got two gauges, your opponent has to guard with two or more cards. This guy is always going to be a no guard to your opponent. Because you don't want to attack with him unless he's got four, three or more cards in hand, uh, three or more gauges. And... With a re with a with, you can snipe out a rear guard, then stand him with sweep, and then just remove and then swing to the vanguard, because um, he's on fourteen. He'll be on fourteen when he swings for the second time. 
um, with a sweet restand, at least. Um, and if you get a crit, bang it on this guy. Bump, bump him up. They put all, all of it on this guy. Bump him up by another ten thousand. Give him a crit and try and get get engages on him. It's so like restand and crash into your opponent. Get rid. Get rid of your gauges, and they're having to guard f with like five or six cards, even though it's just not that much. Because I don't want to take the two damage. Really good card. I would recommend using this as a tech in Tachi Cards Edex. And on to the grade ones. First one is Noah. Uh, two, sk two skills. Uh, first one is when it boosts a rear guard, uh, you put the top deck top card um, as a gauge. This skill is mandatory. I actually got a warning at a shop challenge months ago. Um, quite a few months ago, I got a warning at a shop challenge um, because I hadn't used the skill of Sonic Noah, um, which put it into an irreversible game state. Um... Um, so yeah, um, I, I'm, I'm lucky I was able to just carry on with that tournament, but it made me rem like, remember to kind of like, the boost is mandatory. The boost is mandatory. <laughs> <coughs> um, and the other skill is when it hits the Vanguard, um, on the attack or the boost, uh, you can retire a rear guard and draw a card. Um, fortunately, not mandatory because there's a cost. Um, so yeah, um, uh, yeah, with, uh, it, it's obviously a card that you want with sweep. Um, you want this boosting sweep to have have it gain at least twenty thousand when it attacks. Um, with boosted on this, this gives it a gauge. It gets a gauge from itself, so it's an extra ten thousand power onto a uh, sweep. So yeah, um, an extra ten thousand power onto whatever it is, um, along with a boost. A really good card and an all-around staple. I uh, uh, staple for Tachikaze. I doubt it'll ever be removed unless something comes along that is. That does exactly the same, but is ten. Uh, that is like a little, just does things that aren't really. Basically, has a, unless there's something that comes out that is similar but better. No one's gonna ever get rid of no. It's a staple. Next is Zandi. Uh, it's just one skill. It's uh, on the rear guards. Rest it, and you could rest it. Choose one of your rear guards, and it gets uh, either you either put one gauge on it or move gauges to it, and then counter blast. And the unit you chose gets uh, five thousand power. To be honest, I want I, I, this is one of the uh, another card that. <coughs> <coughs> is necessary for this build. <clears throat> Another card that's necessary for this build. Um, and you want to see him in your... It, it, to be honest, if you see him in your opening hand, you're in for a good game. Um, unless you get sniped by something. Um, and you... To be honest, I have... I've, I've always liked to see him in my opening hand. Um, it, it's something that's always, always going to be a really good card to kind of play now. It's pretty much mandatory for a gauge build. Um, it's absolutely fantastic. Makes the deck run like twice as fast as it would have done in the past. Um, and yeah, this is this. To be honest, I without without Zandi, I don't think this deck would run as well as it did, as well as it would. I am really glad that this card actually came out. So, and the final 
card that I run. I oh, by the way, I'm running all these grade ones at four copies each. Uh, the last one is um, Rabario. His skill is on place. Sob last one. Put a gauge underneath a rear guard, and that unit gets. Uh, I think it's another rear guard, so you can't put one under itself. Yep, one of the other rear guards. Can't put a unit gauge under itself. But um, it gives the gauge and then 5,000 power for each gauge. It's the same secondary skill as um, Mega Rex, uh, in effect. Um, just on place for the Soul Blast. Um, it's a really good skill to com combine with um, uh, another card that gives gauges. It's something that's uh, it, it's another card that gets me where I need to be. It gets me the gauges that I need to kind of go off with um, Gigarex as quick as possible. Uh, I mean, there's so there's there's a lot of cards that actually just maintain gauge presence. Um, just just by being on the board uh yeah so this is like something that, and with these this deck is actually really really fun to play um i mean the the the, the few the main the main course of action is trying to get uh basically riding up through noah smilo and then Gigarex, um, while having a Zandi behind, um, because irrespective of like all three of them have really, uh, like just that's a pressure. Obviously, you put the gauge on it himself, and then with Smilo, you just put a gauge onto Zandi, and then you'll call out him, rest Zandi. Uh, move the gauges over. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, yeah, so Smilo, Smilo will have gauges under. Um, so let's just go through a quick scenario here. Um, obviously, you have these five cards in hand. I'll have these represent the gauges. Uh, they're just empty sleeves right now. <laughs> so, we'll have these represent gauges for now. Um, I'll have these just represent the gauges. And what you'll want to do is you'll want to... Right now, let's just have this out here. So you've got these in hand. You'll write your now, you'll call out Zandi. Do that and he'll give himself one gauge. <coughs> and obviously you'll get a draw from that, so that's not too bad actually. That's actually that's actually made it a little better. And then whether you attack or not, uh, you'll probably be attacked. Oh look. Draw trigger. Even better. I mean, what these are are kind of like not kind of important, but you're taking damage. Next, you're rolling to Smilo. You'll get another gauge. And then, obviously, you're standing. And then you'll just rest. Go on, CB1, he's got an extra 5,000. <coughs> of course, having these, next thing to do would be to call a barrio. <coughs> ah, excuse me. Uh, so, uh, you'll solve last. Yes, get those, uh, ski, get these out of the way. So now you've got three gauges on sweep. You've got three gauges on sweep. And 
he's giving him an extra 15,000, so he's got 20,000 from these two. And his skill puts him another 15,000 up. And obviously, Smiler will go off, giving him another. And you drive check. Oh, that's a heal trigger. And then attacking with sweep, boosted by that. You get another gauge. So this is total. Just seeing this is a total of one, two, three, four, five gauges on sweep. Definitely got resist, and he's swinging in with five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty, thirty-five, forty, forty-five. 54. And that's only on your grade 2 turn. If you had got a crit, that's definitely hit. Unless you've got a PJ. So then we'd go for turn. Oh, look at that. We got our good guy. Well, that would be dam That would be our damage. More than likely take one hit. Maybe two. Uh... Yeah, take a couple of hits. Oof. Draw that. Let's just move the little mouse out of the way. There we go. And with that hand. Now here's where you need to be careful. It would be a ride of Gigarex. Getting us... An extra <coughs> Excel, of course. Which draws us another card. Oh, look at that, Robario. Ah, uh, good. Right. His skill, um, I would probably place here. Rest this. And one here. So that is six in total. Um, probably give the extra five as well. Now here's the strategic thing. Uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. We have six here, so we would remove four from this guy and one from here. Your opponent of damage, and you got one, two, and probably this guy here. Add the gauge as a uh, just like that. and it'd be there'd be more, but we have empty sleeves because I have to swap over. <laughs> so we've got plus five, so that's now. 22, this is 14, and that's just bringing in at that, but we've used the skill, so that's the next 5, that's the next 5, that's the next 5, and then obviously we swing in, and um, let's start plurding gauges, uh, just 3 here, so he'd be swinging in at, let's just turn that the other way, uh, this is 12, 22, 32, 37, going to Vanguard, two drive checks, and we have a draw trigger, which gets us that. It's not ideal, but <coughs> I think the trigger's like us. So the draw trigger would, I'd personally put the draw trigger on, on my mammoth. And then, 
to the extra movements one on armored and then sweep swings in getting a gauge up this is 10 20 30 40 45 54 50, 54 that is 62 to your van 62 that's swinging for 62 this is swinging for 9 19 Oh no, an extra 5k from that, so that is 67. This is uh, swinging in for just 22, and then you got 67 here. 67 with that one, and this is 14, uh, 24. So you, it, it's, <coughs> it's a high pressure game. And with Tetsukaze being rushed, you're always going for the first. And I've got some good garden power to kind of bank me up. Yeah, uh, that's just going through a couple of um. That's just riding up and going through one. That is just one turn. That's my first grade three turn. And I ended up with four gauges on sweep at the end of it. Two of an armored mammoth. Getting in, getting a good set of gauges on. Because yeah. then my opponent would have to guard with two or more. Um, we'd, they'd have to over... Uh, and obviously with this, I'd just remove these two. When attacking. They're either guarding with two cards or less. Or two cards, or they're no guarding. And then they're having to deal with the 26. 26 to the face. So yeah, that that that's just on the first grade three turn. That with an optimal hand, that is your first turn. Uh, and obviously the draws weren't very good for that. But this is one of this is a really good deck. Granted, it is. I will give a couple of uh, pros and cons for this. Um, couple of the pros it's not it's not what people expect when they see a Tachikaze um, they don't expect to see Giga Rex when they when they're going for a Tachikaze play um, they expect Anchor Blader right now um, but I I'm I'm I will be going into an Anchor Blader build in at a later date once I've done it um, and it's ha something that's a really, really good fun. Uh, it, it, it's it's a good starting deck for a budget player <coughs> because most, or pretty much all of these cards are the only cards you're going to have a little maybe. Trouble getting are the higher rarities, but they are worth it. And most of Touch of Cards A is quite cheap. Um, it is a good beginner's deck um, if you're getting into the clan. But I will say this. Um, it's not suited for the current meta. The current meta is Rush, and this is a slow deck. Um, I mean, the play you saw me go through was actually an optimal hand. Um, not every game will be like that, but it's it's what you're actually trying to do. Um, and this 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 deck is actually uh, this is a unfortunately the Vex playstyle is kind of slow. Um, but it is actually something that I will say that is really really good, and it it's. It's something. It's it's a deck that I I will I will I will say that even though it's slow, it's kind of it's a way to get into the clan. Um, I mean, I I I I will have a I've I've got a video coming out um, which I'll be recording after this one um, about my my first oh god my um 
my time so far in Vanguard. Um, look out for that. And um, uh, I'll explain a few things that have happened to me on the way. Um, but all in all, this is a good starter. This is good. It's a good opening build for Tajikaze. Um, it actually uses the gauges in more ways than normal. Um, and I, I will say, I will say this: if you want to start with this build, I go ahead. It's a really fun build. It's a really fun build to play, <coughs> even though the payoff is slow. It's a really fun build to play, and um. I, I I have had a lot of enjoyment out of it. Um, going forward with this deck, um, I will, if I do drop the Anger Blader, um, which is highly unlikely, um, I I will if uh, a, a choice uh, a choice for me to do is to actually drop Anger Blader and bump up Sweep to four. Um, I mean that's the only that's the only option I have kind of like altering this deck at the moment. Um, and as for the future of the the clan, it's I'm I'm actually nothing's been kind of like said as yet, but I'm really intrigued to what they're going to do in the next in the next year for Tajikaze. Um I mean, the the first set was absolutely fantastic. Uh, it brought the clan in. It brought the clan in. It gave us a good power play. Um, the scene changed, and so did the deck. Um, once Raging Tactics came out, giving us a whole host of new cards, and uh, kind, I, I have to admit, there are a few ways to play now. Um, and I, I, I am actually hoping to get a, a, a get a few way, a uh, couple of ways to play. I'm, I'm, I'm pseudo experimenting at the moment, not with this deck in itself, but I am seeing, I am looking for kind of like ways to actually build a deck on on um, uh, build a deck in theory. Um, I've, uh, I, I don't have anywhere to play. Um, online at the moment. I don't have a PC. Um, I've only got a shitty Mac. Um, oh, not saying Mac shitty. I've just got a very old one. Um, <laughs> but all in all, um, I will say this is a great start to the... Um, it's a great start to my this year in um, Tajikaze. And let's just see what happens. And on that, I will uh, say goodbye.